everyone. This is Nancy from Gitpod. And today we are going to learn more about how to run and develop cloud applications using LocalStack and Gitpod. I'm so excited to collaborate with LocalStack. And I have Harsh from LocalStack. Thank you so much for joining, Harsh. Thanks, Nancy. Hi, everyone. My name is Harsh. And I'm currently working as an engineer at LocalStack. And I'm equally excited for having this session because LocalStack as an AWS cloud emulator and Gitpod as a collaborative uh, epiformal dev environment where we can just develop our applications. Both of them seems to be a magical match. And I'm so excited to be demonstrating the features of local stack and Gitpod together. Yes. Totally. So for someone who is new to Gitpod and even LocalStack, let's just give a small introduction. So Gitpod is a container-based developer platform that provisions ready-to-code developer environments in the cloud, and you can access it through your favorite IDE, like you can use VS Code Desktop or even the VS Code Browser, or you can use JetBrains. Now, Gitpod enables developer teams to describe the dev environment as code and you can start with the configurable and fresh developer environment for each new task entirely in the cloud that means if you're working with multiple ephemeral workspaces let's say you're working on different tasks like a bug maybe feature or you're doing a code review you can do it all parallelly on different multiple workspaces in gitpod and once you're done you can just throw it away so that's the Gitpod. And in collaboration with LocalStack, we can learn how we can develop and run the cloud application using LocalStack and Gitpod, which results in a very powerful user experience that just minimizes the whole friction. So with this, over to you, Harsh. Definitely. That pretty much sounded great. Uh, so coming on to LocalStack. So LocalStack is basically a cloud service emulator that fulfills the purpose of a test and mocking framework for developing cloud and serverless applications. So LocalStack pretty much focuses upon Amazon Web Services. And what LocalStack offers is a Docker container that you can run on your laptop or inside your CI-CD environment like GitHub Actions or Circle CI, so that you can test and integrate your cloud applications without having to set up anything on the real cloud. So over the past few years, we have seen this entire pattern that the applications have simply gone cloud native. It simply means that people have started using the various cloud APIs that are available to yeah. them so that they can simplify their development processes. For example, if you want to use object storage, you might want to use S3 buckets. You might want to uh, create some serverless functions. You might want to use lambdas. But the downside of this whole approach is they are pretty, pretty difficult to test and integrate. That means if you want to test your applications out, you might want to create some real cloud resources that would take a lot of time to actually clean out. This is where LocalStack comes in because LocalStack provides all sort of cloud uh, services and serverless applications inside a single Docker container, which you can use to test your cloud applications. And it also integrates with some third party applications. For example, you might want to test your infrastructure as a code configurations with Terraform. You can simply do that using LocalStack itself. LocalStack also has a pro version, which allows you to use some additional APIs and advanced features like cloud pods or CI analytics. And that simply allows you to uh, enhance your whole cloud collaboration and cloud development workflow. So that's pretty much about LocalStack. Yeah, that's awesome. That looks like a perfect match where you can develop your applications um, perfectly and you can have a great developer experience. And simultaneously, you know that Whatever you are producing, you are able to test it with local stack, and it just brings you closer to the production. So whatever you are developing, um, you know you're sure that it is being continuously tested. It has a great test and feedback loop. That's awesome. Like I think with this, it would be better if we can we can show a demo. I'm just going to share my screen. Definitely. Yeah. Learn about AWS. You can still use local stack because. LocalStack is inside a single Docker container. We have a pretty generous education license and a community version. So if you just want to test some basic functionalities like S3 buckets or lambdas, you can use our community version. If you want to use our pro version features, you can just apply for an education license. And you can just use LocalStack as a sandbox to learn more about cloud development as well. So it provides a lot of avenues for you to help grow inside the whole cloud development landscape. Hmm, that's awesome. Thank you, Harsh. Um, so I think we can go ahead with this uh, demo, which is created by Voldemort. Harsh, you can tell more about this demo because I think this is mostly used uh, by the local stack. 
definitely. So Waldemar is the chief technology officer at LocalStack. So he was one of the most early innovators in LocalStack itself. And local, uh, Waldemar previously worked at Atlassian. So this is where LocalStack had its early inception. And uh, after he left Atlassian, LocalStack started out as an independent project. And right now it has grown into a full blown company. So we are a small startup that is based around Vienna. Uh, so if you're interested about LocalStack further, please visit our website and you will get to know much more about the company. But jumping back to the whole demonstration, we have this very simplistic LocalStack Gitpod demo, uh, demo repository. And it also has a sub module called as LocalStack demo that pretty much gives a sneak peek into what we will be demonstrating during this session. But as a very simplistic uh, understanding, we are trying to demonstrate how a classic serverless application looks like. So we have a user's web browser. This is how a user basically interacts with any sort of an application. Then we have an API gateway that basically takes all the requests that are coming in and it basically routes it to the relevant Lambda code. Then we have an application handler, which is a simple serverless Lambda function. And once the request is received, it pretty much puts that inside the SQS, which is simple queue service. So that here acts like a re request queue. And it is then routed out to the Lambda function, which acts as a request worker. So once that's done, it's put into the step functions, which acts as the state machine. And from there, what we are just doing is we are processing a Lambda and we are trying to preserve the state inside the DynamoDB table. Once we are running out this demonstration, you can exactly get to see how this is working out. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, we are trying to archive the Lambda so that it's put inside the S3 bucket. So everything that you see over here will be happening pretty much locally. We won't be using any yeah. real AWS resource. And that's the whole beauty of local stack, which we will, which we will be demonstrating through Gitbot itself. So, yep. That's an awesome explanation about this, about the app which we are going to deploy, which we are going to run on Gitbot. So to open this in Gitbot Femoral Workspace, I can just click on this, which is a Gitbot extension. You can also have a Chrome extension. If mm -hmm. I open this, this opens my this opens this demo in a new workspace. Yeah. So meanwhile, this opens. Um, I am using VS Code Desktop as my preference, but if you like to use some other IDE, uh, you can just change it over here, uh, which is gitpo.io slash preferences. So you can just choose anyone like IntelliJ IDE, or you can use PyCharm, or even the VS Code browser. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the engineers at LocalStack pretty much love working with PyCharm. Uh, oh, that's because awesome. it's quite a lot of lot of features that makes the whole uh, development uh, scenario quite easy. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty intrigued by so many options that Gitpod basically provides because I was yeah. just thinking that Gitpod is an online code workspace, but yeah. this one challenges my understanding here because there are so many ID options available. Yeah, so and also you can personalize your workspace if you have to use. Um, yeah, wow. you can set your own themes or if you want to use dot files, you can just use the dot files and you can save the changes and it will get reflected in your workspaces. So pretty much you can personalize your whole theme, which I pretty much love to do. So I think everyone has their own kind of personalization. So you can do that. Awesome. So I, I think, uh, Harsh, we can just jump back to the demo. So this opens up the VS Code desktop. And as you can see, it has ran as a pre-build, which means that um, because I have enabled pre-build option uh, for this repository due to which all my dependencies and initializations have been already installed. So this just saves a lot of time. Cool. So I'll just give a brief introduction about the gitpo.yml. So, so your workspace gets described, gets configured with gitpo.yml. And um, there, there are several tasks. So we have an initialized task. It just initializes and install all the dependencies which you require to run this project with local stack. And then you run your you run your application. It also runs your application whenever you open a new workspace. And it opens it in, it opens it on 3000 port. So basically, if you're working with any new workspace, it will initialize, it will install everything, and it will run the whole app automatically. So it just automates the whole steps. Yes. So if we go to the support option, um, I can just click on 3000. Yes. And if I try to create a new request, and it says that new request has been sent to the API, it should appear in the list as queued shortly. Over to this, uh, Harsh, maybe you can explain uh, a little bit about this. I'm just opening the network tab also so that you can explain it better. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I guess you can click on create new request again. Uh, that will be much better. So yeah, yes. I guess you can see how the whole network tab has started behaving. And if mm -hmm. you jump back to the VS Code uh, itself, you might be able to see some of the logs that might be coming in. So maybe you can jump back to terminal. Yeah. And yes. As you can see, the logs are being generated and there are some of these logs that are mentioned in the green. So as I mentioned before, some of the steps that is being run right now, like some of the steps like the Lambda functions are being triggered or the API gateway is routing all your requests. Everything that you see over here is being logged and you can specifically, specifically mark this out in the green itself. So this demonstration like pretty much serves two purposes. The first one, it exactly showcases how local stack pretty much natively fits in with all sort of serverless technologies. Because you can see that once we click on that specific button to create a new request, that particular request is being routed by the API gateway. And then it is being handled by the Lambda code, which is further processed by SQS and a request worker. And once that's done, uh, we basically have a two-step process. First, we try to process the Lambda and conserve that state inside the DynamoDB table. Second, we try to archive that Lambda and try to put, in, put it inside the S3 bucket. So mm -hmm. maybe if you just jump back to the whole client itself, yeah, you have already done that. If you click on download result from S3, you can exactly showcase that particular step where the S3 is like trying to conserve the Lambda itself. So the whole text option will just show you like archive result for that particular request. So this is how uh, local stack basically works out. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the best examples out there to showcase like how a classic serverless application is being developed out. There are more uh, repositories that you can check out if you want to like run around some of the local stack code base. Maybe Nancy, you can go to the local stack organization on GitHub. That should be much better. Cool. Uh, you can search for local stack demo. Yeah. So that's the official uh, repository of this particular example. There is also a local stack pro samples. Yeah. If you scroll down. Yes, you can see the third repository out there. Yeah. So these are some of the examples that we have out there, uh, which pretty much showcases how you can use a local stack. Some of these examples might relate to the pro version of local stack. So it might mean that you might want to use the local stack uh, application. So you can easily check out local stack application by navigating to app.localstack.cloud. So this is our SaaS application, and this is exactly where we provide some more features like cloud bots or CI, CI analytics or the team collaboration and more of these. So you can just enroll for a trial period or if you are an educator or maybe a student, you can just get our education license and you can get started with some of these examples out. So these examples might include like creating a Lambda function URL using local stack, which is one of the like recent features that is being rolled out by AWS itself. We also have another like reloading all the Lambda code. So let us say you have a serverless code that you have written using AWS Lambda and you might want to test it out before pushing it to the production. So using local stack, you can actually change that code you can mount that particular code inside the S3 bucket pretty much locally, and you can execute that Lambda and you can check how the results are differing. So this is one of the most premier features of local stack and something that our customers yeah. love a lot. Uh, we also provide some debugging functionality for Lambda itself using VS Code and PyCharm and other JetBrains based IDs. So local stack provides a lot of integrations. It provides a lot of services. And our primary aim through this is to make the whole cloud development experience a breeze for you. So, yeah. yeah. That, that's awesome, Harsh. Like uh, with this, you know, um, I just have a question and this is like totally amazing that um, what we have seen that we are able to do all this locally and we don't require any AWS server to test out the things. And that's really mm -hmm. awesome. We are just able to develop the application in Gitpod and then we are able to just test it. So with this, I just want to ask you, what do you think, like how, um, you know, how Gitpod and local stack are basically together if we talk about the combining power of local stack and gitpod how do you think both of these together fits very well definitely so uh my acquaintance with gitpod was for the purpose of checking yeah. out uh, a remote development platform so back during the time when i was trying to learn some basic development stuff i had a lot of trouble in installing all sort of dependencies and everything like yes. just imagine the pain of setting up multiple databases or message queues yeah. and everything that simply burns your brain out and this yeah. is where something like an epiformal dev environment like Gitpod basically comes in because everything can be just uh, initialized by using a .gitpod.yaml file, which you demonstrated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, an online code workspace can be set up. And even though you might not want to use everything online, you might just want to use your own personal ID for that purpose. Gitpod also provides that option. Now, coming on local stack for this part, 
So as I mentioned before, the whole world is going inside the cloud native pattern. People are not just creating their applications as a single monolith. They're trying to introduce more and more cloud native APIs so that the whole developer experience can be much more simplified and it can be much more stringent. Now, let us say I'm a developer. I'm trying to work on a cloud native application. And this cloud native application includes a lot of different stuff. It yeah. might include virtual machines. It might include message queues. It might include serverless functions. And mm -hmm. setting each one of them up and trying to test them out it's is painful. really painful. Yeah. It's painful. It's painful. And a lot of companies follow this Git-based development workflow. So we create this branch. Uh, we put our code over there. Maybe like it, it will have a feature flag or something of that sort. Uh, we will put our code over there. And we push it to the CI environment and it just fails out. Yeah. So if we are do, trying to do this in the real cloud, we might have a lot of resources that will just linger out. Like mm -hmm. you created this Lambda function and there is no way you can discover that this Lambda function that you created during this CI test, it is there for like past six or eight months and no one knows about it. Yeah. And that is basically costing you some sort of money. Yeah. So this is where something like LocalStack comes in because LocalStack provides all sort of AWS APIs and serverless integrations and everything inside a single Docker container. So you just do a lo local stack start and all of these things would be pre-configured. You just do a local stack stop and everything would be pulled down. So all of the resources that you created, all of the stuff that you did, it is basically destroyed at a single moment itself. If you want to include persistence, if you want to like maybe collaborate with others, you want to share your entire development environment with the other folks, local stack also enables that. And all of this without costing a single penny on AWS. Because AWS can be really expensive sometimes, especially when you are trying to create multiple cloud resources and just you forget them to destroy them out. So yeah. this is where yeah. LocalStack comes in. And coupled with the power of Gitpod, you can not just collaborate with others, other developers using the collaboration feature. You can also create epiformal yeah. dev environment. So yeah. if something is going right wrong, you just pull that whole environment down and you can start from a clean state altogether. So yeah. both Gitpod and LocalStack they serve as the future of cloud development because they will not only make collaboration possible, they will also make the possible, they will also give you the possibility of creating cloud environments. And it will, it will also like make this whole experimentation loop much faster. So you yeah. can experiment yeah. fast, you can prototype fast, and you can iterate faster. So yeah. that's the totally, whole thing. Totally, harsh. Uh, yeah, totally. I think this answers so well. Uh, we can say that reproducibility and uh, the whole CI CD test dev environment and the collaboration we can just sum it like this with this collaboration if we are working with gitpod and local stack and it just eases out everything awesome yeah. so i think uh, this is this is it um yeah i hope um, you enjoyed the demo if you have any questions you can always reach out to our discord channel or the local stack discord channel or maybe the twitter thank you so much harsh uh, for joining us thank you have a great day